Hi, I'm recording this so that it is available in case we have a network issue and so that I can stick to time for the first time ever at a Tadwig conference. I plan to be present online during the session and as much as possible through the conference. So if you have any questions, uh, please get in touch. We can also fire questions off to Alan if need be. At social gatherings, we are all occasionally asked what we do for the day job. It should be easy for us to answer because we are simply building a list of plants of the world. Unfortunately, this elicits the awkward question, hasn't that been done already? Many people have heard of Linnaeus and Latin names and assume that the problem is solved, but it isn't. And we have many lists and nomenclatures and collaboration between them has been complex. In 2022, when the team at RBGE took over the coordination of the WFO plant list, we considered what we could do differently to save our successors from this awkward dinner party question. In this talk, I'm going to share a few of the things we are doing. But first, a little background about the World Flora Online plant list. The list forms part of the World Flora Online project. It forms the taxonomic backbone of the portal is presented separately as a freestanding list and is available for download. It is also now deposited in Zenodo and GBIF checklist bank. The list is comprehensive in that it covers all vascular plants and bryophytes at currently 25 different ranks. It is the product of a collaboration between networks of taxonomic experts and institutional consortium members Currently, it contains around, ah, around 1.6 million names, recognises 440,000 taxa, of which around 375,000 are species. Importantly, it is a checklist, not a nomenclature, in that it attempts to have authoritative opinions about taxa and is not simply a list of names. How do we shepherd this list into the future so that we make more than just an incremental improvement to the biodiversity infrastructure. There was a no well-known model in project management called the Project Management Triangle. Its origins are obscure, but it was dreamt up at some point in the 1950s. I'm not sure why it's called a triangle as it has four components. I think of it more like a table that needs four legs. A better metaphor still is a machine with four levers that we can adjust to steer the project. The problem is we rarely have control over all four levers. In fact, we only have one that we really can control. I'll run through the four components and how they relate to the WFO plant list. Firstly, we have resources. Uh, this is sometimes called cost, but often project resources in our domain are more than just money. Clearly, we're always short of money, but that is an issue uh, in the nature of money itself. It's never enough. Uh, there are other aspects that are important, even if we have limitless funding. Resources and their effect on the project are non-linear. It takes a century to grow an oak tree from an acorn. We can't throw resources at the problem, plant 100 acorns and expect an oak tree within a year. There are physical limits on how fast we can do stuff. A related concern is that resources in our domain are non-fungible. You can't simply replace one expert with another. If you train up a new person, their expertise will be qualitatively different from the old one. For our project, we are lucky in that we have institutional time dedicated to maintaining it and can seek funding to extend that. But this is a tiny amount of resource needed to build a global checklist. Our entire role is therefore facilitating the integration of other people's contributions. And we must empower these people to be worthy of their time and effort. The second component is timescale. Typically projects are constrained by their funding. When the funding period runs out, they stop. 
and so people rush to complete tasks to this time scale. Maintaining a global checklist is an unending task that will go on beyond whatever we can contribute. There is no time scale and so no way to prioritise what is done when. Traditional floristic projects have been very long running. The flora of Thailand has been going for over 50 years. The flora of tropical East Africa took 64 years. We have a four in five chance of reaching two degrees of global warming with consequential biodiversity loss by 2060. So we no longer have that luxury of taking our time and need to up our game a bit. We need to think more like global warming scientists than traditional taxonomists did. We have introduced a sense of urgency by creating immovable astronomical deadlines. We release data on the northern and southern solstices every year. We can then plan around having data complete for these dates or pushing them to a set point in the future rather than an an indeterminate point somewhere in the Never Never Land. Quality is non-negotiable. If there is an error in the list, we must correct it. A key way we manage this is via our sixth monthly release cycle. The data in our management database has to always be ready to release. We can't import dirty data and then clean it up. We must always clean it on import. This is more painful than importing just old anything, but Alan bears most of that pain, so it's fine. Finally, we get to the fourth component of project management, the one we can control, which is scope. Over the next few slides, I'll explain a few things we do to manage scope. Einstein allegedly said that we should make models as simple as possible, but no simpler. Or at least he said something like that, but more complicated. For the WFO list, we have conceptually very simple model with only three main elements. The actual database schema is more complex, but this is the core of it and all we need. Here is how we keep it simple. We manage to keep it simple by outsourcing much of what uh, used to be done in taxonomy databases to the web. 10 years ago, we, uh, we, have had, we would have had uh, tables tracking people, literature, specimens, and lots of other stuff. Today, we simply link out to them. This division of labor is key to the future of biodiversity, biodiversity informatics, in my view. We ask, secondly, we ask two embarrassing questions before we consider implementing any functionality. How many and how often? If the answers are not many and not often, then we don't add that functionality. We judge what not many is in the context of 1.6 million names and not often in the context of 270 years since Linnaeus. There is always a balance to be struck between what is included and how detailed the information is, how precise it is, if you like. Would you like a link to where a name was published? If we try and always include a link to the actual page, then we can provide a link to orders of magnitude fewer names than if we link to the volume or even the series. The clincher here is that in order to find out the correct page number for a protologue, the researcher will need a less precise link to find the volume or series anyway. Another example is type specimens. Would you like a link to all the type specimens for a name? Or would you only like these links if we can also include the type of type they are? Clearly, you, you want both and we can give you the easier one first. It is better to have good coverage than fine detail in many cases. Well, I think this has just about covered uh, the main aspects of what we do, and I can go into more detail uh, offline or online, virtually off offline if you like, um, if you ask any questions either at the end or 
during the rest of the conference. All the work we do is based on what others have done before us, going back many, many years. But this year, our thoughts are particularly with William Yulati's friends, family and colleagues, because we have lost him so recently. Really, the WFO plant list was one of William's many things that we just took on to free him to do other stuff. Thanks, William, and thanks to all our contributors. Any questions? <laughs>